Hi, it's Jessica again. Uh, today we're going to be bench plating a master cylinder. The reason why we bench plate master cylinders is that way we can get all the air out of the master cylinder so when we put it back onto the vehicle to bleed the rest of the system we don't have any air in the system which is going to uh, reduce the pressure um, when we're doing the bleeding. So we'll be using our uh, brake bleeding kit where we have our adapters that we screw into our ports right here. We have some hoses, and then we also have a little plug in case if we happen to have a cylinder that has a third port, which this one doesn't have. So again, when we talk about how we want to bench bleed the system so that way we have pressure for the rest of the uh, brake system when we're doing bleeding, it's because when the air is in the system, we're not getting very much pressure at all. So to kind of showcase that, I'm going to be grabbing a Magna Helix gauge right over here. It's a very sensitive gauge, which reads in millibars, so essentially a uh, about 33 roughly millibars is going to be about one per uh, one psi. So if I go ahead and hook this up and I show you, where we push in our piston, we have about 12 um, millibars, and that's roughly about a third of a psi. Okay. And as we know in our systems, we want about five, 500 to 1,000 psi for the actual brake braking power. So as you can saw with the Magna Helix gauge, uh, we have very minimal pressure coming in the system because it's all full of air. So once we put fluid in it and we start uh, getting all the air bubbles out, we're going to be building up more pressure. So again, when we're going to be the rest of our, our system, we have the, the power to do so. Um, one of the important things to remember is you can go ahead and do this on the vehicle, obviously. What you would just do is you just crack the lines here and uh, leave the master cylinder that way. Um, so the adapter is right here. We have two of them. And the threads are just a little bit under, which is perfectly fine. Um, we don't want them to be over because obviously we don't want to ruin the threads. Uh, we just want to get it nice and tight so that way it sits perfectly on the seat. And we're going to go ahead and take off our reservoir cap. Um, on this particular one, as you can see, we have a little float mechanism here. This is wired into a series circuit, which causes your uh, brake light to come on on your dash. Um, when you have a low brake fluid. Now, when you see that light on your dash, don't just immediately go to your master cylinder and fill it up with fluid. You're doing a, a, dishon a disservice to your customer um, and to yourself. Uh, when that happens, when the light comes on, you wanna take a look and you wanna do a full on brake inspection because sometimes what can end up happening is you could have a leak in the system and or you can have um, low brake pads because this just senses this uh, fluid level. It doesn't necessarily mean that that is the issue. You wanna check the rest of the system. Right, and then it also has this little filter in here that we don't really need right now because we're just going to be dealing with brand new brake fluid. So speaking about brake fluid, right here we have our dot three or four brake fluid. This has about a protection of for boiling point about 470 degrees. Um, remember, in systems you can put dot four in a dot three system, but not vice versa. All right, so we have our dot four, and again we're taking off our little filter. We don't need that. We're going to grab our vacuum lines and we're going to go ahead and put them onto our adapters. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and put our vacuum lines and put them into our master cylinder reservoir. Make sure that they're nice and in there so that way when you put pressure, it doesn't just fly everywhere. One of the other things that you wanna be taking, uh, taking consideration is you wanna be at a good point because you are gonna to need to take a look into your master cylinder because we're gonna be looking for bubbles coming in from the ports inside. So once we have that all situated, we're gonna go ahead and fill it up with our uh, our brake fluid. Again, we're going to be using a dot four in this situation. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up about halfway, give or take. Mm -hmm. So now that we have it filled up halfway, we're going to go ahead and take a Phillips screwdriver and we're going to be putting it into the push rod and we're going to push in our, um, our pistons. And we, again, we want to take a look and make sure we have a nice clear blue inside our uh, reservoir because we're going to be paying attention to air bubbles because we want to Put, slowly push in the pistons and watch the air bubbles come out and we're going to keep doing that at a slow nice pace until we don't see any more bubbles and once we don't see any more bubbles we're going to go ahead and do one final long push in again to make sure we get any bubbles that are in the back and uh, go ahead and do so. So we're able to get all the air out of the system. We did run into a little bit of issue. Um, we had the 
master cylinder kind of a little bit too much at an angle. We were having difficulty getting all of the air out of the system. So what we did is we readjusted, we refilled uh, the master cylinder with a little bit more fl fluids. So that way it covered um, the ends of the vacuum lines nice and good. And then we went ahead and uh, continued air uh, bleeding the system. Um, and that actually worked out pretty perfect. Uh, we did get a little bit extra bubbles towards the end, so we kind of just took a step back and relaxed and kind of let everything situate. And then we went ahead and uh, tr continued bleeding the system. There's still like some microscopic little tiny baby bubbles that were coming out, um, but that's going to be perfectly fine once everything settles. So one of the reasons why those little microscopic bubbles aren't going to be too big of a deal right now is because once we put the master cylinder back onto the vehicle, we do still have to continue to bleed it a little bit more because there's going to be air in the system when we put it back on. Um, so whenever you're dealing with this, make sure you kind of get a nice, uh, some towels going, some towels or rags going on because it is going to be a, kind of a mess. And remember, uh, brake fluid does soften paint, so you don't want to be anywhere that you're going to mess up any of the paint. So when you have the master cylinder back on the vehicle, what you're going to do is you're going to have attach all your brake lines to everything, make sure everything's nice and uh, in there. Um, then you're going to be using your flail on that wrench. Again, you use these with your brake lines or your fuel lines to tighten everything up. And then once you're on here, you're going to go ahead and loosen up the brake line just a bit. You're going to push in the uh, push rod again, let air kind of come dribble out um, of the fittings, and then you're going to tighten it. And then you're just going to keep doing that until no more air comes out. So remember when you are uh, tightening up the uh, brake line, you want to make sure it's nice and tight. Otherwise, when you let off all the pedal, you're going to have, um, you're entering more air into the system, which kind of defeats the purpose.